So we are on. Um, good morning, everybody. I welcome all members uh, of the Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Association of India to this uh, web interaction with uh, Mr. Sanjeev Sanyal, Principal Economic Advisor to the Ministry of Finance, um, uh, Government of India. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sanyal, for sparing time out and uh, interacting with the industry. I will uh, very quickly introduce the panel. We have Mr. Mr. Nair, who is a former president of FHRA and, and from the Leela Hotel, Mumbai. Uh, I have Mr. S.P. Jain, who is a former president of the Western India chapter of the association and also the chairman of the Pride Hotels. I have Mr. Jaiswal, who is uh, uh, from the Ramada group at Lucknow. He is the president of the Northern chapter of the association. I have Mr. Nirav Gandhi. He is uh, from the Baroda chapter of the association. He is from the Express Group of Hotels. Mr. Soma Raju, who is from the South region uh, of our association, he is from Telangana. I will now hand over to Mr. Gurbash Singh Kohli. He is uh, the Vice President of FHRA and the President of the Western Chapter. Over to you, uh, Mr. Kohli. I just want to request all panelists to stay on mute while the other. Thank you, uh, uh, Pradeep. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sanya. Uh, thank you very much for agreeing to meet us and uh, have this uh, interaction with us. Uh, I, I will briefly introduce uh, Mr. Sanyal as the principal economic advisor to the government of India. Uh, and uh, everybody knows what accolades and, uh, the, you know, Mr. Mr. Sanyal's capabilities. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, once again for uh, agreeing to meet us. Uh, I'll come uh, quickly to the point. Uh, my, my panelists will uh, brief you. Uh, we'll keep this short as uh, as we would like, uh, and uh, also we will keep this uh, within the point. Mr. Sanyal, we all we don't want to uh, harp around uh, what the problems would be or what the economic impact would be, but of course there is a necessity that that we that we quickly move uh, to. Uh, as you had said that we do not need to uh, impress upon uh, uh, the facts and figures. But uh, yes, we all do know that this pandemic continues to have a devastating impact on the country's economy. Uh, I will uh, spare all of us the figures because all of us have uh, uh, you know, gone through and through to those figures again and again. And, uh, and uh, Sir, according just just very very briefly, I'll just take two minutes with your permission. Sir, uh, according to WTTC, uh, India's hospitality, travel, and tourism accounts for roughly ten percent of the GDP. Uh, on a quick math, India's GDP being about two seventy five trillion, ten percent would be two seventy five billion. And taking a very lower and conservative and optimistic of view of only a thirty percent deadline, we are talking about Five lakh crores that's at stake. Yes, uh, we all know that uh, it's nobody's fault. Uh, we are not blaming the government. We are not blaming uh, anybody for this. But what we need is uh, uh, a little bit of attention and a little bit of TLC from the government uh, because we do need to get out. Such an important sector. Uh, I'm sure uh, all of all of uh, the government is also putting their think tank and 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 uh, trying to get uh, get all of the sectors out of this. But uh, uh, what we need to know is that what we need to we we just need from the government is a little. We're we're not we're not asking for any any uh, you know handouts. We're we're going to give you uh, we've given you actually uh, our problems and also the the solutions that go with it. So so uh, it's only left to you now to uh, use your solutions that you have discovered as well as what we have offered, uh, sir. Uh, you know, I had I had uh, a lot of figures, but I'm sure nobody wants to hear that because, uh, and especially you, sir, being the being the post, you know exactly what uh, where we're going through. Uh, in a recent meeting of officials at the Tourism and Civil Aviation Ministry held on the 17th of August, uh, 2020, uh, with the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Transport, Tourism, and Culture, uh, they pointed out the dismal situation uh, amid uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the members of that panel that the, the tourism secretary conveyed to them that as per their projections, 
the pandemic has led to a revenue loss to the tune of about 1.6 lakh crore. It is also believed an estimated 5.5 crore people uh, unemployed directly or in indirectly in the tourism sector will be losing their jobs. So, sir, just to conclude, this is a crisis uh, uh, emanating from uh, the worst pandemic we have seen. It is bigger than the combined financial impact of 9-11 and the economic downturn of 2009. It's also said to be bigger than the impact of World War II and the Great Depression. Uh, there's no revenue, sir, during the lockdown yet. Rental and salary bills, statutory payments, EMIs, loan payoffs have to be paid. The spend has increased manifold after the lockdown, basically on hygiene and safety measures with distancing rules, uh, cutting guest capability capacities into less than half. The industry is staring really at large number of NPAs and mostly probably 40 to 50% of this industry uh, unfortunately may not exist and succumb by the year end. Perhaps this is the only industry which has not outlined the problem but has also suggested solution. Uh, you will be aware, sir, that this industry was at the forefront, uh, standing uh, sh shoulder to shoulder with the government, uh, giving out our rooms uh, uh, to, to the health workers and to the various other sectors. And also our kitchens were open, giving, giving meals to uh, uh, all the needy people. We just want a little recognition, sir. We want a little pat in the back. And we also need... Uh, all the help uh, you, 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 we can get uh, since, as I said, there's no cash flow. Uh, just a little suggestion. So why we, we're wondering why the government cannot pump some funds to help an industry uh, survive uh, where actually survival is the problem only because of we stand about third, number three in the GDP contribution to uh, uh, the nation. So with these words, sir, I will... I will not uh, take much more time. I will hand it over uh, as uh, I hand over the mic to our chief guest, uh, Mr. Sanyal, who, who and I request to address this. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Gurbagji. Um, uh, friends, I know some of you already. Uh, <clears throat> Vivek, I've known for many, many years. So, uh, look, I totally agree that this is a huge and important sector. It has gone through a particularly tough uh, shock. Uh, so. Uh, you know, there is no question that something needs to be done. It is also at a time where the government itself has uh, all kinds of problems. A, we have limited resources, but also um, the, the restrictions we are placing are disproportionately landing on your head. Uh, there's nothing much we can do about it because um, getting, uh, you know, limiting interaction amongst people is unfortunately the best response to this uh, COVID thing. So. Um, it affects you the most, uh, but um, that's that's the medically speaking, that's the best thing we can do right now. Now, the question here is the following. What are, so let us spend only time on thinking through practical solutions. Some of those solutions are state government solutions. Some of them are central government solutions. There are also two things. One is a restructuring kind of um, uh, thinking of your existing debts, which the banks will have to do. That's the financial restructuring part. There is also the issue of bringing people back to your uh, thing. So think of it as a matrix. There's central government, state government on one side, and the other side, one is the financial, you know, you've got this pile of debt, we got it restructured through the banks, and you, you sent me a note, I read it. They're not very different, by the way, from what many other sectors have also asked for. And <clears throat> then there is the specific things related to your sector. Um, so let's have a chat about them. One, remember that we have done some generic things for the economy, which is, for example, a one-time restructuring window. Now, I do want to know why this is not, for example, working for, this is the feedback I need from you, why this would not work or is not working or how we can tweak it specifically for you, or if it's good enough, but is, you know, for whatever reason, the banks are not using it, not interact, uh, not responding. So that is a whole bunch of things around that that we can have a discussion. There is a discussion about tax breaks, but as I told you, that it's a it's a difficult thing to do. Be very careful about what you ask for when you ask for being taken out of the GST net. Um, one, you, you may discover that you don't benefit very much from the on the positive side, and you mostly lose from it. Thirdly, this may be a very good opportunity 
to get done certain structural reforms which would otherwise uh, take long, long time. Uh, I know you are the hotel guys, but also the restaurant people, for example, have all kinds of ridiculous regulations. And I know, for example, Delhi, there are 29 separate pieces of paper you have to do to set up a restaurant. And each one of them needs some ridiculous numbers of papers. This is the moment in history and you can go, we can completely slash through all of this and solve it. So think though about them as well. You may not have prepared that as part of it, but uh, in many other industries, for example, in uh, you know software, IT, there were all kinds of telecom regulations which are utterly used, utterly crazy. I mean, I don't know if you realize this, but the entire BPO industry today is possibly illegal because we are working from home and working from home, the, the law says that we have all, every single location has to actually be legally registered. Since we are all working from home, this entire, this meeting itself is illegal. So there are, it's full of absurd rules and we are changing them as a result of this. So there is a case here for changing the structural side as well. So don't only think of, we need demand build out, we need so much money. There are, there are limitations about the resources we have. We will give you the best we can, but there are limitations. So do not think of this as an unending pot, which the government is uh, sort of not handing out because we are a bunch of bad guys. It's not, we have genuine limits on the resources we can give, but within that we will provide you what we can. But where we have done something, especially if it's a general thing, which we have given everyone. And for some reason, it's not getting done for you because the banks are not forthcoming in terms of restructuring, et cetera, despite the RBI window. Well, we want to know about this because we have no sense of humor about this. We have given this after a lot of thought. And if banks are not uh, coming back and saying, sorry, we can't restructure because blah, 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 then that is something we want to know. We want to specifically know which banks are behaving like this. Uh, won't take, you don't have to put it down on paper. You tell us informally who these banks are, who are specifically behaving like this. We can get back to them, especially if they're public sector banks. So. Uh, this should be seen as a feedback loop. We can meet every month and have a chat about these issues and as we go through this. So that I fully sympathize with your problem. I fully know the importance of this sector. I also know that uh, we can't open things up as fast as we would like. I mean, you know from the central government side, we have actually more or less removed all the restrictions. Now, what we could, and even on things like Metro and all that, we're opening things up. But state governments for their for good reasons by the way it's not like they are being bad or something they have good reasons um, you know people in my family have had covid so it's not something that we take lightly uh, many you know i work in north block many of my colleagues in north block have had covid including the home minister so it's something that we should take seriously there is a serious issue here so but we we will uh, do what we can given the circumstances we come out of we'll dig out of this and we definitely don't want our tourism sector to be killed off by this one-time shock. Um, there is life after COVID, and we want to make sure that enough of you are alive at the other side of it to be able to expand again uh, in better times. So um, with that, let me hand this back. Um, any of you, let's take these issues one by one and let's go through them. I would okay. particularly want to know about the um, your discussions with our, uh, your banks recently, uh, about restructuring. So, thank you. So, just before I pass it on, uh, we've structured it in such a way that we are discussing only the bank and the restructuring issue. Okay. The, the, the new reforms, which is the one-time restructuring one. Before that, I'd like, just like to point out on the things that you said, that, uh, that our body also comprises of restaurants and hotels across the country. And I really, really appreciate what you said. We are already in dialogue with the Commerce Ministry ease of doing under the ease of uh, doing business policy uh, this issue of trashing down licenses and rationalizing all permissions are actually underway right now and we've taken state policies as well as center policies and uh, this is what was surprising to us but we realized as you rightly said this is the right time so not only uh, in terms of licensing but also in terms of many other laws different ministries like the copyright the, everybody's coming up and asking us to rationalize so that's that aspect yeah, also just tell us what to do Central yeah. ones, we will do it ourselves. And you keep me in the loop uh, on yes. this. Uh, you can do it, or Vivek knows me very well. He can always reach out uh, on WhatsApp Absolutely. or anything, any of you can. Okay. And put it down in one place for the center government. Then we will go state by state and we'll push yes. it through. 
this is your opportunity to get rid of all these completely idiotic rules you guys have to deal with okay so i'll now just pass it pass over to mr jain the on as i said we'll stick we'll restrict ourselves to the one time restructuring okay new policy that has come up and the problems there in that's what we will convey to you and uh, and we will have our two bits of solutions and we will leave it to you how to deal with all right uh, sir jain sir yeah very much and you for recognizing our problem i think you are very well aware and rbi also is steady and they say this is third largest affected uh, sector now we appreciate the rbi policy and uh, government of india to give one time restructuring but there is a tremendous number of the problem which we are facing first of all we have requested to allow monit monitorium till 31st march why it should be allowed let me just explain to you now this one time restructure board policy is decided has yet not taken up by the bank seriously means they are waiting for kv kamath committee report to come okay so our general observation with each of our member and all the bank they say okay. yet that report okay. has not come i yeah. accept this so okay. so i think that's a fair Second, no no so let let's take each one of them along the way uh, yeah. so that, you know, otherwise i'll have to remember each one of these points Fine, so, fine. Let's discuss. I agree with you. Uh, you know, the KV Kamat thing will come. Then after that, they won't have enough time to respond. That's basically the point you're making. That's mm -hmm. a fair point. I'll I'll take this up. Second point is, sir, that uh, even after Kamat committee, the bank has negative view for this restructure because they have to make certain provision. So bank is not very keen to restructure. This so, is our observation. So, no, so here as well, there is an issue here. i think the way the kv kamath committee will put it but i think we have already announced it that uh, those uh, the restructuring that will be done for in this one time restructuring will not be considered anything but a normal uh, account or the other side of it so the way that's why we did it the way we did which is that if you were considered a standard account on the 1st of march even after restructuring you'll remain a standard account i think that was announced as well again the banks may not be may not be uh, kind of uh, taking that view but that is what the rbi uh, says yes sir second point in our industry this is a seasonal industry one season we have a very less business and other season we have a good business so generally what happen ke our members uh, if, do not sometimes they know ke it will not be npa for uh, 60 days so they pay little late now there may be number of cases like that that they are not defaulter or they are not npa but they have paid uh, 60 days they wait for 60 days and then pay so the those account may be sm1 and sm2 i think these account to be considered if they have otherwise being regular account all the year and they were not so defaulted. what what did the rbi scheme say about sm1 and sm2 remind me again the sm1 and sm2 no as on th first march i have to be up to a standard account means fully paid Um, I think for, for some days. for some categories, SM one is also allowed. No, maybe for MSMEs, I'm not sure. No, that but should SM. be allowed. SM one and SM two because they are not NPA account. That is our submission. That is our request. Okay, so I'll I'll take that up as well. I think this is an issue, by the way. Again, uh, while you're bringing it up as a uh, hotel and restaurant industry, this these are generic issues which every industry will face. So in that sense, I think you should reach out to other industries as well. it helps to strengthen it very often what happens you all reach out individually and it doesn't so i think you, you you this is not a hotels and restaurants issue you please coordinate it with cii and fiki they must be facing this you can also talk to phd chambers aso cham i think this will be a standard issue so let's let's try and work this one um this this is not a uh, as i said there is a strength in numbers on this so i think if you bring it up as a part of a grander thing i mean i can tell you in general the government will be sympathetic to your line of argument because in the end if you only give people 3 months the banks also can only process so many cases in 3 months now sir uh, this uh, period of um, restructure even with all your support and bank uh, accept it after coming kv kamath committee but it will take december and now during this period of the september october november what is the amount due we must allow the monitorium at least for 3 month otherwise our all members will be defaulter and by that time bank will say ke now we cannot restructure you have already defaulted so i, I agree with you so so this is again 
and not a, a hotel and restaurant thing please speak to your uh, uh, sister uh, industry bodies this is a standard problem um, uh, and as i said we are generally speaking sympathetic to your cause so um, and that is why we have also put these various restrictions so that we, we also don't want old ibc cases to suddenly slightly use this to try and get out of the net uh, that will spoil the uh, and by the way as in industry body you've also got to maintain certain amount of discipline amongst your members you know the last one of the problems with all of these kinds of things is that uh, it requires um, discipline on all sides uh, so if you will kindly help us also in making sure that you know unscrupulous practices are not done because while we open up the gates to help people then you know unscrupulous people misuse it so uh, this is something i i will also request you humbly that you help us uh, with this we, this in, in in many things like this uh, trust is very important sir uh, the last so, point is where there is a consortium of the banks now 75% uh, exposure uh, bank will be agree and process and 60% if uh, agree then they can proceed but one condition all the bank has to sign but suppose someone is small bank and he is not cooperating, then entire um, uh, restructure will be uh, held up and think, it will not be I think that we are very clear. Once a yeah. certain proportion are done, it's done, even sign or no sign. I think the rules are quite clear on this. Just check it. Fine. If it's not the case, we will change the rules. Thank you very much, sir. Pradeep, you can take other point. Yeah, so just uh, as to what solution we could offer on part of the banks not to comply with the directions of the bank, I'll take it to Mr. Jaiswal. What generally summing it up from what Mr. Jain Shah said is that at least continue the moratorium till such time that the banks are ready with the policy of the resolution or restructuring. That was what we come to. Now, I'll take it to Mr. Jaiswal as to what is the solution lies and what is the reason for our suggestion to that solution. Ah, huh, Jaiswal ji, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Sanyal. Uh, I am Surinder Kumar Jaiswal, the President of the Hotel and Restaurant Association, President Hotel Association of Northern India, and Vice President FHRI. Sir, you have rightly said why restructuring cannot be effective and why the banks are not interested. This is the main main thing. Sir, little at the background, you see what the government and, uh, and the RBI has done uh, immediately when the pandemic was uh, was there on 25th March? After 25th March, the Reserve Bank of India issued a circular about the postponing or the moratorium for three months. That is was from 1st March to 31st May. Sir. But what, what what the banks did it, sir? So the interest and the EMI they debited it on 31st March. They debited it on 1st April. Now what happened, sir? Whatever accounts, whatever money the uh, the hoteliers or the restaurants. Uh, I am talking about my industry only. They were having their account. Their accounts were freezed even after the directions of the RBI and clear cut such a quick response from the government. Now, now these accounts were freezed for one month or one and a half months, and whoever has got the uh, money in their account, their accounts were debited. Those who didn't have the money, their accounts were debited also. And their accounts were became non-operative. So the salaries were held up, the payments were held up, everything was and even after after moratorium period, one and a half month or one month, they, they returned it back. So that that was the condition at the first no, no, so, I, so if if there were certain things like this, by the way, some of this may be illegal. <clears throat> so can you yes. can you do me a favor? Talk to your things. I want specific information on. Uh, where these kinds of things happened, which banks did it, especially if they are public sector banks, which branch, and what was happening? We will inquire. We will institute an inquiry into this. So please give me hard information. You see, because I, I'll tell you why I'm asking this. Every time uh, we do this interaction, something like this comes up. Some of them, there are good reasons. Sometimes they're not so good reasons. But we want to know where where they are, and uh, we are also, by the way. Not to say that your what you're saying is not true, but in some cases we have also discovered that they were uh, that uh, the issue was something different. So we need to have you know in these situations we need to be very very clear. Otherwise we will end up solving the wrong problems. We have a serious situation, but you see very often in the in the uh, attempt to uh, say oh you know, everything is going wrong, you then load 
20 problems to us and we end up wasting time solving the wrong problem. So very, very careful bringing problems to me. Please be clear that there are only in the end so much mind space. I have to solve four or five problems. Okay, that's the number of problems I'll be able to solve. This is a key problem. Then be clear that this is the key problem I need to solve. Then I will not be able to solve some other problem because I only have that much mind space. So I'll, I'll, at the last, I'll give you the solution of this also. So this, the same thing happened in the second moratorium also. They debited the account, then again, they, it was credited maybe after one month or 15 days. Or, so the so you finally take out this and tell me that this is a serious problem, I'll try and solve it. But be clear okay. that this is, this is serious enough that some other problem does not need to be solved and need to pay attention to this. Okay. Now, 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 even even after uh, the end of the moratorium also, there was the advisory from the Reserve Bank of India that the entire interest of seven months, whichever is cropping, that has to be distributed and it has to be paid uh, up to 31st March of 2021. Now, every all all the banks, they have debited it on the, on the 1st of the September. The in, entire seven months interest has have been debited. No, no. So, so, you, no. so, here exactly what you need to do is to give me hard evidence that this is what has happened with names of accounts where this has happened i want to see the bank statement where this has happened which bank it has happened we we can do a lot of things to the banks but you know we need hard evidence number one and i i'm i'm repeating to you this again be very careful of asking us for things unless you have very clearly hard evidence because a lot of people claim a lot of things and we have in this crisis i have wasted a lot of time solving problems that were minor problems or non-problems on investigation. So we always when somebody comes and loosely, ye bhi ho gaya, mare saad, saad, ye bhi ho gaya, ask them, humko dikhaiye kya hua, kis bank ne kiya, kis, kis karan se kiya, aap puchye. I also want to know which bank and if possible, which branch, uh, if they have had some correspondence uh, 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 relating to this, where they ask the bank manager and the bank manager said, sorry, we don't like your face. We want that piece of thing. Then, you know, then I have evidence to act on. Otherwise, there's too much of this conversation going on loosely. So I want to help you, but be very clear that I, I need uh, ammunition to be able to do these things. Thank you, sir. Now, the second point, sir. You see uh, what, 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 how great the government is working, sir. ECLS scheme. Our minister of uh, MSME was with us uh, about a month uh, before Johai, and he gave the clear pictures. So there, there are only two points in 20% in of the ECLS scheme eligibility. One, number one, account should be standard as on 1st March 2020. Second, you have to give 20% on the loan balance of 20, 29 February 2020. Now, the, even after the, even after the such a, uh, such a very, very strong statement by our finance minister that the banks cannot refuse the ECLS to have. And if any any bank is refusing, it, it has, that case should be. Even after that, banks are taking months and months, maybe one month, one and a half months. They are not even responding to this ECLS scheme, which is being guaranteed by the government of India, sir. Yes. So we, please, please give us data on this. Every, every yes. single thing, assertion, show us how long it took, when this, uh, when particular uh, case, uh, we want specific cases. If you give us 10 cases, then see, giving me one case doesn't work. Give me 10 cases where such a thing happened. If you can show me this, and especially if there is a pattern, you see, not every bank will be doing so. Bank X doesn't, bank Y may be good. So there are good banks also. So if yes, yes. we see certain pattern, then we can take talk to the chairman of that specific bank and say that, look, we collected the information. This is what is happening. We we will not necessarily share this with, back with the bank. We will just raise the thing that, look, this is what you guys are doing. So it helps us to push the case rather than, you know, generically everybody is talking, ye bhi hua, sir, humare saad, hum barbaad ho gaye, all kinds of things we hear. So I need to know, again, we will have this conversation a little while. Speak amongst yourself where you can get me hard evidence. What are the real things we can do? And we are willing to pick up the phone and, you know, all people, especially if a finance minister has said something and banks are behaving to the contrary, we have no sense of humor about it. Right, right, sir. I'll give you the solution at the last, sir. Well, another point, sir. You look, look the look, look the working of the bank, sir. Even the CBDT chairman 
uh, the prime minister is saying that you have to digitalize everything. All the payments should be digitalized. You have not to make any charges. Even the CBDT chairman issued a circular that from first uh, from first January 2020 also you are not going to debit anything as far as the charges are concerned. Now the CBDT has to go to this much level that if you are not going to do, we will punish you. We will do with penal actions. These are this this is this shows that what is the nature of the banks, sir. As you rightly said, there are some good banks. The government banks they are behaving in a somewhat in a in a good manner. But as far as private banks are concerned, they are they are treating that the government is trying to encroach on on our business. So that is their nature, sir. Now, sir, you see. As yes, as sir, be very careful. You know, I I. <laughs> I I have no thing about private and whatever is the rule and are they following it? That's all I care. I have no interest yes. in encroaching. I genuinely have no interest in encroaching in private sector because I I have uh, you know I'm ideologically not very uh, keen on you know Atmanirbhar Bharat does not mean Sarkar Nirbhar Bharat. So yes, be very very but careful about what you ask for. But right, they are not following the rules. We will we will certainly ask questions. Right, sir. So what I mean to say is that, sir, sir, as far even if we are treated as a customer, sir, as a customer we are maintaining a certain amount of in current account, certain account is saving bank account where we are not even getting any interest. That is the minimum balance of it keeping in current account. We have been helping the banks in in, in all the ways because you cannot you cannot survive unless and until uh, you do deal with the bank, sir. So, uh, so they are also doing a business under some license. We are also doing under uh, business under some license. They should not be so much. Uh, they should not be have no fear in mind that if whatever they want to do, uh, they they will be allowed to do it. So that is the reason behind uh, we watch. We are saying that key restructuring. They will they will not help us in getting the sense of the government. In 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 restructuring of the loans, they will not going to cooperate. When there was such a hard decision and such a hard thinking from your side also that we will punish them if they are not following the directions of the. No, no, so so let's also be a little sympathetic to them. I mean, at the end of the thing, remember they are still paying interest on the deposits that they have they are holding. And by the way, you will be the first to complain if your personal deposit suddenly they stop paying interest on. So. They are still paying interest on that one side, just like you are complaining about the fact that you are paying rent and you are paying uh, salaries. They are also paying interest, and uh, if we restructure, that means they are their incomes are also dying. So we have to be sympathetic to their problem as well. Now, so you know, let's not begin to wield the danda everywhere, like you know uh, the. Uh, you know, local uh, district magistrate kind of approach to uh, solving problems. So the point is, we have to have a balance. We have done certain sets of things. We think those are doable. Let's not make moral judgments on things. Um, the key here is to try and solve the problem as best we can, which works for you, and it also works for the banks. By the way, the banks are under enormous stress. Uh, you are not the only industry with serious uh, issues. There are other industries with very, very serious issues, and many of them will also have this. So we have the shock. We have to go through this together. I think that is the spirit in which we need to take this forward. There are certain rules. We want them to follow those rules. But I don't think, please don't try and make moral judgments of people because this is a difficult situation for everybody. So, uh, absolutely rightly said. The only point which is left is that why only solution which is the if. If now the restructuring has come, or or your previous whatever directions were there, there should be some sort because there should be some sort of uh, some sort of um, what do you say some sort of responsibility on there that if they are not going to follow it, this this result they will then only they will come under your direction. This is the suggestions which so there are certain is. kinds of rules have been put in place. We will we which is fair. I think particularly the point made earlier that you know. If K V Kamath's rules come, and then we have only a few days in which to act on it, then nobody will be able to act on it. So that's a fair point. So there are certain kinds of things that we can do, which are fair. We have all agreed as a society to do them, and banks are able to do it. They will do it. That's okay. Let's also work with the banks. They are also under enormous, enormous pressure. So, so 
uh, let's try and solve this. I have got the gist of what is the issue. I want some information which I asked for. If you can collect that information so that we we know the kinds of things that are happening, particularly if they're public sector banks, that's easier for us. We can just make some phone calls. Uh, but let us now begin to look towards solving these issues. I'm also, I think Nirav had talked, I think Nirav was the person who had talked earlier about the longer term things that we can also solve. We can talk to commerce about them and get those resolved. We can also talk to state governments, particularly BJP state governments can be uh, probably uh, talked to. And let's get, let's get this, uh, sure. let's get yeah. stuff running again. So, uh, so thank you very much. To yeah, summarize sorry. what Mr. Jaiswal says, what he probably means is that there should be some penal action for non-obeyance or disobedience of the... That's all is a limited point because what is required to follow is required to follow then for every consumer. Yeah. To what are back. the rules we follow? So yeah. I think that's the limited thing that we need to do. Yeah. There are our rules. We came up with certain things. Certain commitments were made by the finance minister and we will follow through with them. Well, thank you. I'll take it to, I'll, I'll pass it over to Mr. Somaraju. Uh, Somaraju, sir, you can go. Sir, my name is Somaraju. I'm from Hyderabad, sir. Sir, I, we, uh, uh, our members have a very particular uh, problem which uh, most of the uh, players are facing. As most of the hotels uh, which are uh, 10, 15 years uh, and older, those uh, people doesn't have any working capital, doesn't have any uh, uh, term loan on them. Now, whatever funds uh, we used to do on that rotation, the excess funds, we were existed because of these power bills, because of, of the staff salaries and all, all existed. No, no, so I like to understand why are older back, older hotels in particular condition because of this? So what he means to say is that there are no loan exposures in these older standalone hotels, and so there is no avenue to now seek any emergency credit. That's why not? Why not? What's particularly bad for old hotels? Is there a rule? So once the revenue cycle starts, sir, we generally doesn't require much of working capital or uh, our term loans on that, unless we take it for the renovation and Right. So, so present situation when we are approaching the bankers, they are saying tourism industry is in uh, a bad shape. It will not recover for next two three years, and uh, our, our priority sector is not that. So, uh, we'll not be in a position to uh, do any kind of funding. If if some guidelines can come uh, from the government, it will be uh, better uh, for all the hoteliers. Okay, let me let me look in. So basically, what you're saying is, if you were a bank, if you were a hotel, which is a hotel, didn't have a large banking relationship in place, then you have a real problem because now you suddenly have to bank relationship. That's basically what you're saying, right? Yes. Okay, that's a fair point. So, what happens with new banking relationship if you are normally? That's a, actually a very good point. Because the way we have actually done the expansion of the hundred percent guarantee based on your existing so we didn't have an existing what happened. Actually, that's a very, very good, very good question. Uh, but yes, I agree. Uh, that is something we need to think about. I agree. That's a, by the way, again something that is true only of uh as an restaurant. So again, the uh, SMEs, companies that were uh, borrowers earlier, which we suddenly have no bank or so this is something you have to right. I think please do uh, raise this with CIA and Fiki as well. Okay, so just related to this point only really in terms of solution to what lies there. So, Maril, sir, you'll have to new uh, uh, solution that can come out of this. Basically saying that there are hotels who have no loan exposures, we need help. I'll take, put, put it to Mr. Nirav Gandhi and that's where one solution is what is coming out from our side. Yeah, okay. Hi, thank you for being with us. I'll go straight to the point. Uh, Somaraj, you mentioned uh, that uh, we are having uh, the working capital issues. I think uh, the underlying problem that we have understood is that the banks are uh, staying very from the hotel industry right now restaurant and hotel industry because they are expecting a low business turnover for the next uh, 12 to 18 months. 
also as historically we are uh, we are put under the infrastructure sector which is already a red flag sector for the financial institutes so all the more now we are getting a double whammy for not giving even uh, uh, even the working capital loans to us so i think uh, it, it's you know it's not only just the covid issue it's also some historical past which is uh, causing a problem now directly this is affecting the employment uh, which is close to about you know uh, the uh, four crore uh, employ uh, employed by the industry is a bigger issue just to clarify one more point yes the restructuring that we just spoke about in the past is 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 attaining to close to about 10000 hotels overall out of the 55000 hotels of the industry i'm not sure if the central government has these figures with them but if they do uh, we would like to have a copy so that we know the actual size of the industry of the hospitality industry now the working capital will actually work good for about 30000 hotels which are in the budget segment primarily between uh, one to three star hotels price range average room rate of about 2000 rupees and and that's where the masses are actually traveling and that's where the employment also is yes the the four and five stars have a higher uh, uh, capex involved and higher employment uh, in turn which we are already working on the restructuring with uh, of the financing for them so i would request you to look at this sector in in a in a bifurcated manner in this thing and and service both of them thank you so, basically, so let me understand the point the point you're making is that there is an msme aspect to the hotels and they have a specific problems that's basically the point you're making yeah, okay. yes yes um, just to add to what uh, nirav said what is happening is although unlocking has started from june but effectively our businesses are at just 10 percent of pre-covid so i no, no, understand so you guys are basically on lockdown even now so there will be operational loss for the next 12 to 18 months that is for sure so which means we'll need fresh funding in any event so what happens with somebody with loan exposure there is an avenue but oh, so this is this is no so this is absolutely understood now this is a very tricky issue because basically it requires somebody to put money into a um, loss making industry just to keep you alive and i understand that banks will not want to do this and this is somewhere where we have to find some way of providing government support. There is no other way of doing it. I mean, effectively, the government will have to borrow on your behalf and fund you in some fashion. That is basically the issue at, at some level. Uh, I agree. This is a very, very tricky one. And I think this, this is something we need to really think about. Let me think about this. Um, maybe some, let's meet in a few weeks' time. Uh, I myself don't have a solution to this problem. By the way, governments are awful at uh, distributing credit and, you know, we have created various credit institutions, but quite frankly, we sit be and all these guys, but they have awful amount of trouble passing it on. And by the way, when they do, they do it again, rooted through the same banks that, that you are already anyway having trouble with. So this is a tricky issue, I agree. And especially since we have, we have, you know, even if we remove everything, it's not like people are going to rush to go traveling again. So, so I can see that this is going to be tricky. Okay, you, you leave these thoughts with me with, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm going to solve this problem, but the other issues which we had discuss, uh, discussed with Mr. SPJ and earlier, let us work on them. At least let the KV come out. Those things are already in place. And uh, those at least we, we, you know, those have to be done for everybody. So let's do them. Okay. This one is a more specific one for your industry, and I agree that this is something we have to think about. And I now request uh, Mr. Nair to go. Yes, Mr. Nair. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nair. It's odd to call you Mr. Sanyal, but all the same. Call me Sanjeev. It's okay. Nobody needs to call me Mr. Sanyal. <laughs> Sanjeev, uh, I recollect the days in 2012 when you were fighting for the infrastructure status for hotels. And we convinced at that time, uh, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee was the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister to take it to the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs and to add hotels in the infrastructure list. That was done and uh, the Ministry of Finance and the RBI issued necessary Gazette notifications. But unfortunately, uh, the notification had this one line which said, 
uh, this can only be given to hotels in the for future sanctions. And at that time, we had 23,000 crores of, of credit given to existing hotels, which were about 220 numbers. And uh, we requested the then finance minister to take it up. But unfortunately, because of some divergence of views with the then RBI governor, it remained unchanged. And all of us, all the 220 hotels became NPAs, including ours. So I think at the time of this COVID uh, pandemic, uh, maybe it's a good time to take up the issue again. It's just a matter of changing one line. And um, at that time, Mr. Shakti Kata Das was the secretary, you know, uh, economic affairs who steered this proposal. And Erdogan made it. So why don't you take it up with him? I mean, he makes yes. sympathetic to the cause. Yes, in fact, next week, uh, he'll give me time to meet him. And he was secretary at that time and he pushed through this proposal. I'll come back to you, sir, if, if you can, if you can also. Yes, I am, look, I am very sympathetic to the uh, hotel and restaurant industry. You know that. So, yes. I mean, I've worked with you on some committees. And if I'm, even this particular proposal, I think I had some inputs into it. So, yes. so it's not the case that I don't understand. But you see, I have, I'm balancing a much wider system that is also in extreme stress, including the banks, which are also themselves in extreme stress. So we have to do what we have to do. Uh, and the you know, government will have to provide support while it does not itself have revenues. So it is not, a, it's a very tricky balance that we have to uh, do. Uh, but anyway, we will do what we have to do and we will uh, move forward. So we, you know, uh, we will take from you know, there is direct I, I am, you know, simply for the issues. So you don't have. As to, for current estimates, we have forty thousand crores of credit given to the hospitality sector, and uh, we are wondering. So did incremental credit get given to you uh, after that, based on that notification? Sorry. So I agree that they didn't do something about the past credit, but at least from 2013, did they begin to give you uh, incremental credit as infrastructure? Even that was not given. The existing hotels also were not given, and the new proposals were hardly about thousand crores worth after the uh, date of the notification. So right now there is about forty thousand crores of credit given to the hotel sector, and they are all given for. Uh, eight year or maximum 10 year tenures. So we are worried even this restructuring takes place. It's uh, it'll be hardly for three, four years. And again, there'll be the same problem. So we need to hasten up the okay. process of- Anyway, let, so let's do this one step at a time. We try to do 10 things, you'll end up with doing nothing. First and most important thing, simplest thing to do is that there is an existing framework which is not meant for you, but is meant for everybody. That framework itself is not getting done. Now that framework, at least let us make it work for you. Partly it'll be easier because it has already been announced. It's a matter of forcing it through and making it work for you. And in many cases, those issues will be in common with every sector. So therefore you're likely to succeed in that. So let me advise you, let's take that one time window and make it work to the extent we can make it work. Same thing is true of the 100% uh, uh, guarantee that was given um, to MSMEs. And I believe MSME hotels also have a problem. So let's, so everywhere where an existing thing exists is there, and for whatever reason is not working, let's force that and make it happen. Because you see, announcing yet another new thing, uh, then that thing doesn't work, then we have to fix it. We will waste a lot of time. Time is of the essence here. Getting the things that have already been announced to work is absolutely critical. If you can get us feedback on things uh, wherever it is not happening, and I've asked for some feedback, let's do that. So I think let's focus on that for step one. Step two, there are certain things, supply side things, structural reforms that we can use this opportunity to get it done. Let us get those done as well. And I think Neera was the person who's, who's decided to take that up. So I think. So I think Mr. Jain, if you can, or whoever one amongst you, or Surendra Ji, Jaiswal Ji can take it up. One of you decide, you're going to take up the issues relating to existing things that are not getting implemented. So those, uh, let's do that. 
Then Nirav, maybe you can take up the issues of structural reforms that are not getting, um, uh, that you can do. Um, if there are central government rules, regulations, uh, all kinds of uh, idiotic, outdated ideas about Sarai Act of 1883 or whatever it is that is bothering you, this is your moment in history to get rid of all of this. Okay? And then clearly delineate which can be done by central government and what has to be done by state government and st state government rules are quite different. So, uh, from state to state. So, again, if you give us some idea of the landscape, also what the alternative should be. If you can provide us a model act of what those rules should be, that model act can also be. And please don't try to over uh, stretch the thing. One thing, since I deal with many industry bodies, let me tell you, very often what happens is you ask for 10 things and you think, kindly do not do this, then what will happen is the four most useless things will get done. Okay? Ask for five, please ask for the five genuine big things that together will solve the problem. They should also be, because it shouldn't be one problem here, half a problem there, and even if I did all those changes, nothing happens. Comprehensively amongst those five changes together should solve your problem, 80% of it. I'm happy enough. I don't have to solve 100% of your problem. So they're also the same thing. So same thing, again, go back to the, amongst yourself on the, on the, on the, on the financial restructuring. Think through the really big things. If you can tell us these are the five things, and if it is in an existing framework, that's even better because it means that we don't have to go back to the drawing board. It also means that you very likely you have allies in other industries, and then we can push it through. So what I'm trying to do here is to explain to you, let us do the minimum amount to get the maximum advantage. Do not do the classic mistake, which every uh, federation industry body does. And I don't know why you do it. Every year before budget, I face this. You'll come and give a laundry list of things. Civil servants will always do the most useless things. And they will say, you have charge in my two to kar hi humne. The most useless things get done. And year after year, the, you, you make this mistake. I have no idea why you do this. So please be clear. We want these three things done. These three th rules are clearly useless. This is the impact, and these are the rules that should replace them. Tell us those rules and ask for what solves the problem that those original rules were supposed to set up for. So the reason it doesn't happen, so you solve that problem right up front and tell us. Think so, through what is the response going to be, and you say, we thought it through when you when our our change. Subsection three has already looked at this. This is what is done. This is what is done worldwide, or is even better if it is done. You know, uh, Punjab has already done this with no great tragedy has happened to them. So clearly, it is okay for Meghalaya as well. So if you can tell us in this way the simplest thing, then we will do all of it that we can do. <laughs> this is currently not the time for perfection. This is the time for doing what we can with the minimum number of moves to have the maximum number of outcomes. Because just like I'm doing this with you, I'm doing going to have now immediately after this meet with another 10 people. And I can tell you automobiles industry has a problem. Infrastructure and airlines have a problem. And textiles has a problem. And they have all kinds of problems. You know, somewhere Bangladesh is eating up their business. Somewhere some other thing is happening. The banks will come back and make exactly the opposite thing to what you just told me. I give, why should I give out a loan when I know he's going to go past and I, and I'll tell you what they will tell me. I sympathize with the poor hotels, but how can I kill my industry, my bank in order to give loans to a guy I know will not pay me back in 18 months. That's what he's going to tell me. And I, you know, so see it from his perspective. So don't, don't necessarily take a negative view. So we as a society have to solve these in the best way we can. We are really dug ourselves. We have gotten into a hole, no fault of anybody. It's not the fault of the government. It's not your fault. It's not the fault of the banks even. So we are in this hole. We have to get out of this hole and let's work together and do the best we can. And wherever there are problems, I will, I'm with you. Um, you know, as I said, uh, Vivek knows me for many, many years, he even knows my dad. So 
So if, if he calls me by my first name, he has more than the right to do so. Sir, taking a point from what, what uh, Nirav said earlier, uh, just a suggestion. Uh, we, we're wondering if uh, this is possible, uh, if the government can pick up uh, the fund that the repo rate and do a direct benefit transfer to the affected tourism and hospitality business. So, see, what, what will happen is what you are saying is that we provide you money at our cost. By, by the way, our cost is not at the repo rate. Our cost is at our borrowing rate. By the way, the government itself borrows at 6% 10 year money. So, it is not the repo rate is the wrong number. The repo rate is the money at which the banks give put money back into the reserve bank. So, that's a, it's a deposit rate. It is not a lending rate. So, uh, don't confuse these rates. But anyway, even 6% is a lot lower than you. But the question is, should the government take this on as a sovereign? Because you have to be careful. If we take everybody's loans on on the sovereign, then our sovereign interest rate will also go up and it will affect everybody. So, you know, there are all kinds. It's a, it's a tricky balance that we have to do. But nevertheless, I think there is a case for lowering everybody's interest rates in the system. And, I, and I'll again talk to Reserve Bank. You know, I'm, I'm publicly, I made many public statements saying that our interest rates should be a lot lower than they are right now. And I do not think this business of inflation is a big issue. There is no inflation in the system. The measure, there's a measurement problem with our inflation. It's not an inflation problem. After all, um, you know, real estate prices are down 20%. How can they be inflation? So this is a red herring that uh, we have got in there. Yes, sorry, Vivek, you want to say something? Uh, just before the visit of His Highness uh, Mohammed bin Salman to India, the Prime Minister had put together a team under Samidab Khan to go to Saudi Arabia and see under what sectors we could get assistance. Because he had just gone to uh, Pakistan and he gave a, a $5 billion uh, grant to them. So we went there, uh, I represented tourism along with DG Tourism, and about seven, eight sectors were there. And they agreed to give $10 billion US dollars uh, to India. But unfortunately, the proposal is with the uh, embassy, with the ambassador of Saudi Arabia. And there's some issue about the amount being given, whereas we didn't want any exchange loss to be covered over a period of 10 or 15 years. So, so I'm tell us about the MEA, I mean, you know, there's money available and they want to provide it. We are always happy to take it. So, so find out what the issue really is if you can with MEA. And we'll try and open this up. So it's not the MEA, I said. Well, uh, Amitabh Khan is on it. So, so Tika, let him want... tell him that you have spoke to me and if there's anything the finance can do, we'll do it. Amitabh okay. Khan is, uh, you know, I'm in touch with him over all kinds of issues. Why not about this? So, we are... Uh, so if, if he is the person driving it, uh, you know, we are happy. Uh, by the way, there is one thing that we can, you know, one good way to get these things moving all in one direction is to have some sort of a project in a sense, a deadline or something. And one good deadline we can all work towards is the year 2022. I'll tell you why this is an important year. It's because not only is it the 75th year of our independence, it is also, by the way, uh, the year in which we are going to be the G20 president. It's a very big deal, by the way, to be president of G20. India is going to be the president. Obviously, our prime minister will that consequently be. This is a year we are going to basically invite the world to come here. So, in that sense, please tie this whole thing up with the G20 presidentship. So that, and prime minister himself will be involved. It's a great way to showcase ourselves. So, the way to do this is let us think of 2022 as being the year we will open ourselves up to the world. Come and visit India. So let us, you know, that will create force a, a way of getting all our minds come together in one place. Time. We'll close it. Just yeah, yeah. in US dollars or in rupees, because uh, the Saudi Arabian government wants it obviously in, in dollars and be payable. Whereas uh, we are no, no, so what is who is the exchange loss every year? <clears throat> so which is which is the body that's going to take the money? Uh, I'm not sure which body in the government of India. No, 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 no. Government of India generically does not go and take money from Saudi Arabia. They will issue a bond. So, who are they? You have to find those details out because the question is, does that body, uh, is it able to provide, uh, uh, you know, 100% guarantee? Then basically it's borrowing and then it's borrowing. that body, whichever it is, is basically borrowing in dollars. 
it's a sovereign dollar uh, script, uh, yeah, yeah. so you know you have to find those details of, i mean generically saying they are of money of course the world is always of uh, willing to give us money the question is why why do we want to take it at what interest rate and who is the person responsible for uh, providing the um, guarantee yeah, yeah. so you may need that those details if amitabh kant is on it is the right guy he can always raise the issue with us uh, he has my phone number and he can call the thanks so not an issue do you ask them so, quite frankly the act of foreign money is not the issue right now you can see our stock markets have gone up like crazy so liquidity is there on this planet we can how to leverage it finding the pipelines that will get it to you is the problem Sir so, Sanyal, before we close out, uh, uh, just one last question, which with great reluctance I must put to you because a num- lot of members want some clarification or some economic reform on that. Uh, it's a vexed issue of the payment of interest during the lockdown and for this period. It's a vexed issue. We understand, uh, and the, in your position where you're balancing all industries, for us the difficulty is that how do we bring out that money, even now or even later. i'm not saying it's not a part of law or not of uh, what anybody can do but it requires an economic policy it requires a government policy no no i agree with you. with you i totally agree with you so but this is again as i said it's not a specific to you i'm sure a whole bunch of uh, people are having a discussion about this at dea uh, at dfs and also in the reserve bank of india it's something by the way i think you should uh, come as an industry i think ci and fiki will also be raising this so tom as an industry to us i mean frankly this is a really tricky issue so uh, someone will have to basically uh, pay the bill for this moratorium and we'll ha- we haven't decided who it is so in fact it's the waiver that we're talking about that I mean, is- basically you are asking for a waiver so who then pays for that waiver that is that is basically the tricky part and the, the who pays for the waiver very of very clearly eventually becomes well the banks can't be asked to do it because eventually they have to pay the depositor so then it comes to the government now then it becomes a very tricky one we don't have resources secondly the immediately people will say okay we are giving waiver but you know the bigger bigger the def, def, the bigger the debtor the likelier that he is a uh, sort of a bigger guy and consequently immediately there will be political issues that you are actually uh you know waving uh, the interest costs of the rich uh you know all kinds of things will happen i'm just telling you the thinking that we have to also balance on all kinds of other sides i mean it's not an easy one it's also somebody will say it is unfair to those who were um, you know keeping their uh, ship tidy and had not taken up large debts and so you know all kinds of issues will be raised so it is uh, maybe some sort of subsidy can be given maybe not 100% maybe some proportion that also can be done so things like that can be done i mean i'm not saying there's any solution to it uh, it's a tricky one and uh, i don't know the answer to your question to be very frank so that's what it is and the less important you. question we that's why we call upon you to because you being the advisor i think you could really come out with something in which there's win win for all maybe there's advice. no win win it's about apportioning loss so so government has to put in of course it's yeah. to what about apportioning the loss so there's no win win here the question is who is going to lose how much we give to you sir on uh, what what can be the way forward as for anyway, us i got sir. the sense of what you have you also know my view on this so let's have this chat in sure. a few weeks time uh, you will also know and please reach out to some of the other industry bodies because we are actually meeting everybody and coming to the same questions over and over so we are wasting time doing this rather than getting on with solving problems yeah and think through exactly what is the ones you really want done uh, yes. you know we have to have a rough and ready view on this we won't solve every one but at least the big ones let's get them done and let me reiterate something that has already been announced is is much easier to get it and make it work than announcing yet another scheme uh, governments unfortunately love announcing new schemes because that's why be- bureaucrats kick the can down the road so basically they want some scheme that gets announced and get you know then they can retire before the scheme gets started then they are safe that's basically the thinking process in most cases so <clears throat> do not ask for new schemes you will get a new scheme
I think we've come to the end. Just one last thing that insofar as the solution lies concerned for the banking issues or for disobedience, one window of redressal with the RBI for this specific issue. If you open that up, I think nobody needs to come to you also to trouble you. You know, members can directly send an email, some kind of redressal, which the regular ombudsman redressal won't work. So for this specific restructuring, so since, Vivek is meeting RBI, since Vivek is meeting RBI anyway, and he knows Shakti Kanta Das, by the way, Shakti Kanta Das is possibly the most um, balanced, sensible Reserve Bank governor we have had in a very long time. So he's a very sensible person. He balanced. Um, if he can do something, he will do it. He was in, he was in finance. So he understands our point of view as well. So please reach out to him. And you have Tarun Bajaj as well on our side, uh, DEA secretary. He's also very sympathetic to your cause. So look, do not, I mean, first of all, also another thing, do not come to us and tell us the problem. We fully appreciate the problem because we hear it every day. The question is how much can we do? We have come up with certain solutions which may not be perfect, but let's make those work to the extent we can. I mean, really want these things to work. We're, otherwise, you know, you know, it's not like we are pushing back against you. We are completely with you. And we are in the same trench with you, by the way. Because if you guys don't come back, we don't get revenues. In this economy doesn't, but let me tell you, I'm the guy who has to stand in front of media and defend minus 24 GDP growth, okay? So believe me, I don't, I don't enjoy it any more than you are enjoying this. Uh, so I have, if you, many of you will have seen me on television the last three days. So I have to, I'm the guy who has to, who has to uh, justify these kinds of things. And even though it's not my fault, we did it knowing fully well that the economy would hurt because of health reasons. So, you know, we did what we had to do knowing fully well that we were getting hurt. So I am with you in the same trench. It's not like you are coming to me as supplicants. We are, we are all in the same trench trying to dig our way out. Um, so it's not like I am, uh, you know, uh, I am anywhere outside of where we are. So let's try and do what we can as a society together and let's get out of this. These are moments where, you know, when you think about this two, three years down the line, you will think of this as the moment where, you know, uh, India came together. That's what's going to happen. I'm telling you, this is the moment you will think back. So let's work on this together. I have to go to another one, unfortunately. But, you know, uh, you guys, uh, you know, let's solve these things and try and do as best as we can. Thank you very much, sir. Anyways, we really, really indeed appreciate uh, all your suggestions and uh, your insight into all these issues. Most importantly, the, the reform part of it and the solution-oriented approach. We thank you um, profusely for coming on this platform and we will engage once again after a month. We would just be a little wary to compose ourselves into a FIKI and CIA because the hospitality has very, very peculiar issues. Of course, we are a part of that. No, no, so the general we ones, so you. there are separate issues you bring to me. Yes, absolutely. The generic absolutely. ones go with them because you see, absolutely. otherwise we are hearing the same thing about 10 people. Yes. It's a waste yes. of time. Let's all okay. solve this once. We have, in fact, created a system of solving it for once. Okay. So Thank you. Let's make it work to the extent it will solve a significant part of many of the problems you have. So let's make this thing work. Yes. Otherwise, you know, we'll say everybody comes with us with a specific problem. Then we try to solve it specifically, we'll die. So let's, if 80% of it can be solved by one thing and making it work, then let's make that work. Absolutely. Otherwise, you will get into bureaucratic this thing. And let me tell you, everybody loves specific problems because it means that you don't have to solve any problem in reality. Right. So okay. please be clear about what it is. You help me. I, will, I really want to help you guys out of this. And believe me, uh, I don't want to ever have to defend minus 24 GDP in front of the media ever again in my life. So, you know, I want someday to be uh, standing there and talking about plus 24 gro GDP growth. So, you know, so I want that to happen. So let, let's work on this together. And I'm just telling you, please help me to the extent possible, make the general systems work because we put something there. Let's make it work. If it's not working for some reason, give me feedback. Give me specific feedback. It didn't work for these 10 things. And, you know, I can go back to these guys and say, look, you guys talk big about making it work. But look, I have information here. It's not working. And, you know, and then, then we can make it work because and then then there are specific issues as well. I agree with you. I, I mean, you know, we will try and make those work, too. And I think 
we can use this G20 presidentship as a sort of a, in some ways, a sort of deadline in order for us to force everything to that. We can call it the year of India and say, look, let the world come to India. We'll make visas easier, whatever it is necessary to get that year to be a particular good year. If we haven't got a vaccine by then, let me assure you, then the tourism industry will be the least of our problems. On that note, thank you very much. We'll let you go. Thanks for your precious time. Thank you, oh, sir. Thank you very thank much. You, sir. Thank you very much. Very well appreciated.